Hello, hello, hello. How are we all doing today? Right, in this video, I'm going to talk about uh, mistakes that riders tend to make. Mostly beginner mistakes. Right, so all of us have been beginner riders. And there's not one of us that has not been a beginner rider. And we've all made some of these mistakes, haven't we? Let's be honest with ourselves. I've made these mistakes, some of them, but thankfully, none of it has uh, bit me in the arse, so to speak. So our first mistake that beginner riders make is forgetting your kickstand or your side stand, the thing that you, uh, you lean your bike on. Everyone knows what I'm talking about. And most of you, some of you have probably actually done it. <laughs> So you've gone out for a lovely ride, it's a beautiful day, the sun's out, there's no rain, probably gone out with your mates or you're by yourself, and you glare down at your, uh, your petrol gauge, your fuel gauge, and your fuel light has come on saying you need to go and get some petrol. So then you've, uh, you're taking your time to go and find some, uh, a petrol station to go and get yourself some petrol. You park up by the petrol pump. And then you go and get off your bike after you've turned off and whoopsie daisy. You haven't, uh, you haven't put your kickstand down after you've put your petrol in. So obviously you, you put your petrol up with the bike uh, straight. So you know how you can get all the petrol you can in before you put the cap back on then you go and get off your bike and then yet yeah, all of a sudden you've dropped your bike and now you look like a bit of a twat you look like a bit of a pillock unfortunately and now all of a sudden your lovely fresh bike that you've polished over the weekend your clean bike you've probably got a new exhaust and now it's all scratched up or you've damaged your bike and your kickstand's on the left and what was also on the left you always lean your bike to the left and you've got your uh, your gear shifter and your clutch lever on your left and depending on how your bike goes or how, how your bike is you could possibly snap off your uh, gear gear shifter or your gear lever depending on depending on how hard the bike goes down it could be quite difficult to actually save your bike because you're not expecting it you have in the back of your mind that yeah my bike's gonna go down onto the kickstand but you haven't actually put your kickstand down and the, the sooner you realize it as it happens so quick you couldn't catch your bike in time i mean after a, a few years of riding after a few months of riding it's the second nature to put your kickstand down or even make sure you've got it down and definitely kick it to make sure it's down before you get off your bike it just comes to second nature but beginners as they're not used to this concept of kickstand and you know you're on a two-wheel bike it, sometimes it could take a while to uh, get in the back of your mind that you need to put your kickstand down so yeah there's not really a way to it's down to your your personal memory or muscle memory to uh, put it down and obviously like i just said it takes after a couple of months of riding, riding every day or whatever, you soon you soon learn to put it. Or if you've dropped your bike a few times, so I've actually witnessed this in real life. So I know, I know he's parked his bike up and then he's done it a few times. Poor sod. <laughs> Where he's gone to get off his bike and he's he, he's uh, forgot his kickstand and now his bike's on the floor and he's a bit pissed off <laughs> a bit pissed off as anyone would because the lovely bike is now a bit scratched and damaged so the next beginner mistake or this is more of a panic mode kind of a kind of thing but beginners do tend to do this is braking too hard on your motorcycle and like i just said it's more of a panic thing I'll give an analogy later on in the video of something else that beginner riders tend to uh, do. But it's basically when you panic and then you go to grab your front brake and you put way too much pressure, way too quickly and then your, 
your brakes lock up, your wheel locks up, and you lose con you lose traction, then you dump the bike, and that is a that can be a major issue, depending on how fast you're going, and you can end up in a real real accident, a real bad accident, and have a really shit day. So the way I'd go about this, the way you should go about this, is practicing your progressive braking pressure, your progressive braking. And it's quite easy to learn, and I'll give you an analogy right now, is that it sounds like you got an orange, right? You got an orange, and you want to get the orange juice in a controlled manner into the, uh, into the glass that you've got. You want to make some orange juice or whatever. Now, the best way to do it is not to obviously crush the orange, and the juice goes bloody everywhere. It's when you slowly start to squeeze and progressively squeeze the orange to get the juice where you want it. You know? So you can use this as an analogy of what you want to do with your with your brakes. You want to progressively put the pressure on. You don't want to try and chuck it all in at once. You want a nice controlled stop. Now in the British in the British tests, the motorcycle tests, and the lessons. To do your module one, to pass your module one, you need to show that you can um, emergency stop. And the way you emergency stop is obviously progressive braking. So I'm not gonna go grab the brake, I'm literally gonna squeeze it. I'm not gonna try and ram the brakes on. It's normally like um, car drivers that come to motorcycles that do this. Because in a car, you can just go and slam the brakes on, can't you? Yeah, you might lose traction, depending on how fast you're going, and you might cause an accident in your car, but in a car you don't have to worry about losing a bit of traction but on a motorcycle you lose a bit of traction and that could be the end of your day you know that could really sod your day right up lovely fun fair i don't need a fun fair i've got a motorcycle thank you very much but yeah if you want to actually get it down to a t the best thing to do is go into a car park and practice your progressive braking pressure but again if, if you're in england you're already taught this you have to be taught this in order to get your license so you uh, british people out there or maybe australian if you've got the same sort of uh, tests if you like then you're already taught this sort of stuff now i recommend beginners like i always recommended is to get a bike of abs it's your anti-locking braking systems and that could help you get out of a really uh, shit situation if you're braking too hard the abs kicks in and it sort of breaks for you but obviously don't rely on it to break that's not what the purpose of it is to stop your wheels locking up and your brakes locking up now another beginner mistake or mistake in general that riders tend to make is not looking far enough ahead now as a motorcyclist i mean anyone should be look, trying to look as far ahead as they possibly can now, definitely for a motorcyclist because obviously we're more vulnerable so we need to perceive hazards and react to them accordingly to stop us getting into a really shit pickle and a bit of a pickle shall we say the reason why we should definitely be looking far enough ahead like i'm doing now i'm looking around that corner is so we can receive the hazard before we even get there so we have that time to then react because that's where most, some motorcycle accidents happen is when people haven't got time to react and they panic and then they chuck on the front brake or whatever and then the, the wheels lock up like we just uh, had a discussion about and so always give yourself that time and that braking distance to react to a hazard it might be someone crossing the road it might be another vehicle with brake lights on he wants to indicate so he's going to slow down and you might be five cars behind, but that guy right up in the distance putting his brake lights on to then turn left or whatever, he's, he's manipulating the traffic. Obviously not in a bad way, but he's manipulating the traffic to all come to a halt. So if you've already seen that he's going to turn, you know there's going to be brake lights soon, so you know to start slowing down and prepare yourself for the traffic to come to a stop or whatever. Or you can look up far enough ahead and see, look, there's 30 signs there. I know that I'm going to have to slow down. I see there's a give way sign up there. So I'm not going to have to come to a stop sort of thing and have a good old look before I pull out. So it's always good to look up ahead before you get to your location. 
and so you know what you, what to do. Because every uh, hazard, like someone crossing the road, because that's a hazard, red light, that's a hazard, car, every everything that could get in the way and cause an accident is a hazard. Even though it's a, a slim risk of causing an accident, it's still a hazard. And your hazard perception has to be on point when when you're a motorcyclist. You can get away with it in a car if you have an accident. You could you, you've got a much higher chance of survival. But on a on a motorcycle, simple little hazards that you don't that you don't perceive very well, like a stick in the road, a log on the road, or whatever, or a bit of gravel on the road. Everything can be a hazard, and everything can cause you an accident. You know, well, not everything, but you got to look at the risks as well. You need um, risk analysis on a motorcycle. What's the best? What's the best way to get around this hazard? I'm not going into depth of it, but this is this is the things you've got to have in the back of your mind to get to be more of an advanced rider. You've got to have good risk analysis. Oh, there's gravel there in the road. I better swerve to the right. You know, like you've got to be defensive when you're when you're out there riding. You've got to be ready to react to any hazard that comes your way. So right now I'm seeing brake lights, so I know that I need to slow down instead of getting up that person's ass. And that gets us onto our next mistake that riders tend to make. Stopping behind cars at red lights or at any light. During traffic, people tend to stop behind the car in front. Right, right close. And that is a dangerous mistake, in my opinion. Now what I like to do is I like to park off to the side of the vehicle so I have that room and give yourself enough room to be able to escape. Because I see some morons out there, some moron car drivers, van drivers, lorry drivers, they love to get up close to the vehicle in front of them. And it's an impatience thing really, it's an impatience thing and they want to get right up close to the vehicle, they just want to go, you know. They just want to get right close to the vehicle in front of them. And what's in front of them? Us. And we don't want people right behind us, do we? So it's better to be off to the side to give yourself that room to escape. So like I just mentioned, the guy's behind you. And then a car behind him is not paying attention on his phone or whatever. Just in his own, in his own world, zoned out. And he crashes into the car behind you. And now, as you've got a car in front of you, like I'm doing now, I'm sort of stopping, giving myself some room. But as you've got a car in front of you and, behind, and you're behind this vehicle in front of you, and now you've got a vehicle behind you, you can be sandwiched. And then the guy that's zoning out crashes into the car behind you, pushes the car into you, and then pushes you into the car. You know, you get sandwiched. And it's, it's, it's a very dangerous spot to be in the middle of two cars like that. So I prefer to park off to the side. So if you're checking in your mirrors like you should be to see what's behind you, even when you're stopped, even when you're stopped, and you might see someone, you know, coming a bit quick up to the lights, you can sort of give yourself that room and that time to sort of get out of that situation. It's about riding defensively at the end of the day. And I think every rider should, have, should be riding defensively to save us the aggro of being in a bit of a pickle. The next beginner mistake that riders tend to make is riding aggressively. Now I've already covered this in a video but I'm going to still talk about this. So riding aggressively is racing around, road rage kind of thing. You know someone just cut you up, oh I'm going to fucking get him, I'm going to chase him now. And all of a sudden, all your safety precautions are going out the window. You're not perceiving ha hazards right. You're not paying attention to people crossing the road, people turning. You just want to catch this car and have a good old moan at him, you know. Have a good old moan at him. And now as you're not paying attention to all the hazards around you, you're putting yourself more at risk of having an accident. Which we don't want. The best way to get over road rage, right? is to have a stoic mindset now eventually i will make a, um, a stoic guide a guide to stoicism stoicism because it's the best 
this is the best mindset to have when you're out riding it's basically saying right the guy's just cut, cut me up for, you know you might be fucked off of him or whatever I mean it's completely understandable completely understandable why you're uh, annoyed completely understandable but you've got to have in the back of your mind that yeah no one's hurt I'm going to carry on riding defensively I'm not going to chase this guy there's no point it's not going to solve nothing it's basically being more rational, more having a more of a rational mind. And going, there's no point chasing this guy, I'm only going to put myself more at risk. Which you are. Especially when you your emotions get out of control. And that's the worst thing that you can do on a bike. The best thing to do on a bike is have a stoic mindset and a clear mind. To be able to react to hazards. Professionally. Now don't get me wrong. I do believe that motorcyclists should travel a bit quicker than the traffic around them or like the motorway and that to be a bit more um to flow more with the traffic as you could say to be more more at flow you don't want to be sort of like stiff you don't want to be like at the same speed you want to slow up speed down get off get out of people's blind spots always paying attention to shit that's going around you so you want to flow a bit better on a motorcycle again you don't want to be like racing around because then if you're going way too quick don't get me wrong if you want to speed that's completely up to you but if you're going way too quick and you're not giving yourself time to react to hazards that's a hazard in itself for speeding but don't get me wrong in some of my videos I do go a bit quicker but I know that I need to give myself that, that time that room to react, be able to react to the hazards as I keep going over and as long as you've got that time to react, you're alright, you know? Obviously don't go stupid like 40, 40 miles per hour in a 20 or something stupid like that. But if you can see far enough ahead, and you've got yourself time to react, you're alright, you know? But racing around and acting like nothing can touch you is a real serious issue. And it's normally when you're out with your mates and you, you, you know, it is that, that's that male dominance thing. Who's the better rider kind of attitude. Now me and my mate, I've made um, a video of that, of me and him riding around. Yeah, we did race off of lights and stuff, but we know our limitations, which I'll get onto another time. And we know that we've got room to react to hazards. We're not racing around in urban areas when children can run out in the road. Because at, at the end of the day, there is more vulnerable people out there. Yeah, we are one of the most vulnerable people on the road, us motorcyclists. But then you've got cyclists and women with pushchairs and old people in wheelchairs, you know. You've got to take this thing, these things into account and have that stoic mindset. Have a rational mind. Is this safe to do it? Is this safe to do so? Sometimes speeding can actually get you out of a hazard. If someone's about to merge into your lane and you pick up a bit of speed and you're going over the, the speed limit, fair enough, you just got yourself out of a shitty, uh, shitty situation. Horsey. Yes, mate. Bring back the old days. The Distinguished Gentleman's Ride is an event over in Belgium on the 19th of May this year and they're determined to raise awareness and funds for prostate cancer now if you go into the link in the description you will see um, my mates GoFundMe page if you like and he's raising the money and 100% of the money does go towards um, charity for the prostate cancer if you want to find out some more information like I just said go into the link if you want to read up more about it, if you want to donate yourself, feel free, that's completely up to you. But if, having the back of your mind that if you do donate, then you will uh, be much appreciated. And I'm sure the men that you'll be potentially saving their families will be most appreciated as well. So yeah, that should be all in this video. You all take care of yourselves. Ride safe. Keep your rubber side down and your shiny side up. And I'll see you in the next video. You all take care. Ta-da!